I'm Brian Orr, president of Kalo Services, and admittedly, I am a bit of a history nerd and a Florida native. And one of the things that uh, Florida natives always like to joke around about is that if it wasn't for the invention of air conditioning and bug spray, we wouldn't have all these people moving down from all over. Of course, uh, then my parents also wouldn't have moved down and I wouldn't be living here. But since I've spent most of my career in the air conditioning industry as an AC tech, I was always kind of curious about the invention of air conditioning. And most people will point out that Willis Carrier was the inventor of air conditioning, which technically is true. In January of 1906, he invented an apparatus for treating air, but the apparatus was actually for treating humidity at a paper plant in New York. So a lot of people like treating humidity. What does that have to do with air conditioning? Well, he was kind of the one who came up with the term air conditioning, which is the simultaneous control of the temperature, the humidity, and the airflow and filtration. And so that's really what he called air conditioning. So essentially he invented air conditioning by inventing a word that we use today. But the person I like to think of, of course, as a Florida native, as the inventor of what most people think of when they think of air conditioning is actually the compression refrigeration cycle. And that was the inventor of the mechanical ice machine, John Gorey. Now, John Gorey was born in 1803, died as a young man still in 1855, and he died almost 20 years before Willis Carrier was even born. So John Gorey was way before Willis Carrier. And his invention was as a physician. He actually lived up in Apalachicola. My wife and I recently traveled through Apalachicola and I had to bore her with the whole story of John Gorey's life. He was trying to solve the issue of malaria and yellow fever. He had a lot of sailors who would come into the port at Apalachicola and they would have malaria and yellow fever. And his theory was that by controlling the temperature uh, in the general vicinity where the patient was, he could cure yellow fever. Now, that turned out not to be correct, but of course it did reduce the symptoms. And the problem that he had was, at that time, the only way to get ice to his patients was to actually have ice that was stored from frozen lakes, chopped out of frozen lakes up north, and then stored in warehouses, packed in hay. And that wasn't a very effective way to do it. He had a lot of losses. It was very expensive. He thought he could actually take some of the experiments that were already done on using fluids for cooling. Some of those experiments were done actually by Benjamin Franklin, believe it or not. And he could improve upon it and do what he called rarefying air in order to cool water down to the point that it would actually freeze. And his experiments actually proved right. So he built this big contraption, mostly made out of wood, and he was able to rarefy air, which in turn was basically just depressurizing it. If you think of the song Come Fly With Me from Frank Sinatra, where he talks about up there where the air is rarefied. I'm not going to sing it for you. Um, that's what he's talking about, depressurized, up there in the upper atmosphere where the air is depressurized. That's what he was doing with this system to make ice. And so by depressurizing, he could create a cooling effect. And that was, in fact, the first active, usable compression refrigeration system. He was never commercially successful with it. A lot of people believed that the old ice lobby, the people who used to chop it out of lakes, actually responsible for discrediting John Gorey and his invention. But he did forever create and possibly change an industry of industrialized ice making through mechanical refrigeration. Obviously, new refrigerants came in, uh, made it a lot more possible and a lot more effective. The machines got smaller. But should we thank John Gorey, a Florida native, for resulting in the mass uh, migration to Florida? I don't know, but he was a good guy who was trying to solve a problem, and for that, I applaud him. There is actually a John Gorey Museum up in Apalachicola, so if you're up that way, it's a beautiful little town. I would encourage you to have a visit and pay homage to who I would call the father of compression refrigeration, and I would give him as much homage as I do Willis Carrier, though I am a carrier dealer. So I like to give Willis his fair shake as well, especially anybody who lives in Florida and knows how oppressive the humidity is. It's not the heat, it's the humidity, as all the old guys say. Willis dealt with the humidity, and John dealt with the compression refrigeration cycle. Now, mosquitoes and bug spray, that's a totally another issue, one which I still don't think is quite solved as well as it should be. I'm Brian, and that was your nerdy air conditioning history fact of the day. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. 
Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.